Hello family and we're back again for another edition of Deb Chanel's 48th World Hosting with the Family Affair And I ain't gonna never get rid of y'all like Wendy Williams That said and dismissed her audience But of course I'm on YouTube and you all are at home visualizing me on YouTube So I can see where she was going I was just being a little pity right there Okay but I got my family in the house And I know my hair the hair is like Marisol is here Amy VW Ronald Boykins PM my pimp in charge Patricia Kaysen Know my son Ray looking and, and chiming in Barbara Kelsey uh, Leslie Barber, Anna Banana, Suni Dillard, Unspoken Voices, Lola June, Annie Nat, Agent, Sunshine Valley, Charlie Thompson, Real Pop Related D, and Jerry Hendricks. Yes. And all the other people that come over when they feel like they want to come over. But I'm telling y'all need to come on over here and talk to me. Now I know I've been gone for a couple of days or a day I believe. It's because I was trying to rest my bones. Alright. I was tired. And it's still sore. But I did have a follow up today. Uh, Friday afternoon. And he permitted me to uh, not wear my sling anymore. He said I need to wear it like every four hours you know like wear for four hours let it go for the rest of the day however i want to do it and uh still i'm having no weight bearing i can't lift anything that's heavy and uh decreasing me off my pain medicine got on some steroids today told me he um it up would help with my inflammation and my pain a little more than you know the other pain medicine i was taking and we're just gonna do what it see what it do what it do we're gonna let my body heal so that was a great prognosis diagnosis don't have to have any surgery my rib will mend on its own and my shoulder uh, the part that they thought was dislocated it was just like how you call it? It's like when you punch a wall and you make that indention. But if you would have punched a little bit more, it would have broke. He was saying that's how my shoulder was. So we're going to be doing some uh, PT work in that area uh, for that. Uh, what do you call it? He said a, a depression in my bone. So hopefully we will not have to discuss surgery in the future. He's not looking for it as well as I am not looking for it. And we're just going to let my body heal with a lot of rest. A lot of love to self-love. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, not definitely uh, doing any more ladders and all of that type of stuff. And definitely not... Uh, lifting up anything heavy so we won't be doing any exercise and probably until may or june because i just need to rest so i just wanted to update you all on that but we will be doing my pt exercises for my shoulder okay so hopefully everybody had a beautiful week if not i know you got through it because you're that kind of person you get through shit okay you make shit happen so even when it's not happening and um we're here at Friday. Hopefully, everybody's off on the weekend. But for the ones that are not off on the weekend and they have to muddle through, uh, make it do what it do, baby. I'm sure you're going to get a day off soon. But if you work seven days a week, God bless you. <laughs> God will sincerely bless you. Okay? you you making it do what it do because you got to do what you got to do to make those ends meet. So, I ain't mad at you. I am not mad at you. Not one bit of the time. Okay, but um, I want to thank some newcomers that came over to the uh, house. Wanted to sit down and see what we were doing because they heard about us. They know we get down, we talk shit, and we move on. Okay, we don't try to make any enemies over here. And we don't try to kick nobody out. Anybody that get kicked out, they do it to themselves. Okay, uh, but Demond Tate, welcome, welcome, welcome. Frankie May, uh, Colin, was it Colony or Co Colonel? Uh, Cornell, thank you for stopping by. Jerry Sparks, thank you. Christine Washington and Angela, she's a one namer. Angela, hey girl, and Marilyn Smith, welcome, welcome, welcome. As you can see from the pictures, we are going to be talking about Nene Leaks and Eva Marcel. I just threw Kenya in now just for edification, okay? Because Eva. 
We're talking about Kenya or we're talking about Nene Leaks, okay? So you can never go without the one. They always go together simultaneously. And um, that's just how we go. But we're getting a story from Reality T. And um, I'm going to assume, since I don't see a name, that it's basically a staff journalist or commentator over there that works for Reality T. They put an article article together on Nene Leaks and Eva Marcel and she titled it or he titled it Nene Leaks thinks Eva Marcel used her to get on the real housewives of Atlanta now there could be some truth to that people you know giddy up to you and 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 want to make nice to you and get into your circle just to get something that they want you do have those type of people they're called opportunists you know we know some in our family as well as some that we just meet and greet with and some we work with okay but uh yeah that's the story we're going to be covering very lightly tonight okay and we're going to be talking about this coronavirus that seem to be taking over everybody in every country okay everybody's out there shopping like they ain't got nothing else to shop for and we all know this coronavirus was generated in a lab put out by the government to depopulate at least that's my speculation that's my speculation people y'all get in try to debunk me if you want to but i'm just saying that's what i feel about it what say you family what y'all feel about this coronavirus going around here and how people are acting uh in their states you know waiting in long lines just trying to get into a market of such or just uh getting into the market and having nothing to buy once you get in there now i think we need to be level-headed and uh do some judgmental type thinking some critical thinking in here now who's to say you know, just giving, you know, playing devil advocate. You buy up all this food from other people because you just got it like that. And you got this bunk or some kind of warehouse you live in where you're storing all this food for about at least three years. Okay, in case some natural disaster happens or somebody calls in martial law and the government has taken over everything and they're telling us where to go, how to go, when to go, what to do, and all this kind of thing. And uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do if they tell you you can't stay in your house anymore because you were infected and you have to go to a place designated where they're going to treat you, get you back well, and then hopefully you can come back to your living uh, at your residence, okay, that you pay mortgage or you pay rent at. What you going to do with all that food and all those materials, okay? What are you going to do? All right? So my thing is, buy sparingly, you know, uh, stay played up, you know, as, as, as best you can, you know what I'm saying? Because all these things are going to happen and has to happen if you're in the spiritual realm or you're biblical, you're a Christian. We know all these things have to pass, okay? But they ain't no sense of going trying to buy everything, okay? And then if they come get you because you, you don't buy exposed from the coronavirus, they're going to take you away. What the hell are you going to do with all that food? Is it going to go to waste or somebody's going to break in your house while you're gone? Or the government going to come get it and put it in a warehouse they already got deemed that they're going to put everybody in, that they have to be quarantined and they're going to feed it off of, uh, feed the people off your food and your hard work and your frustration that you had to wait in all these long lines. I'm just saying. Trying to keep it real. As long as they give us gas, light, we can cook. Okay? Go on and partake of... Even like you normally would on a normal basis. Ain't no sense of going stripping out stuff unless you're going trying to set aside the street. You're trying to buy up all that toilet paper and disinfecting stuff to turn around and sell it to the masses for an astronomical amount because the need is there. Are we playing that supply and, and demand game? I don't know. I don't know. That's trifling if that's the case. That's very trifling. But y'all be selective and be nice to each other. If you already got 7, 18 cases at home, there's no need for you to go on out there and get no more. No. If you got one or two cases at home, you're doing well. You know, when you get down to the last few bottles or whatever, go on and get you some more at the store. It's called, let's buy logically, okay? Let's not buy out to just create a, a bad frenzy out there and you leaving people that really need something if it ain't number one case.
case. I mean, if you don't buy seven, you can't give up one to somebody who really need it. I mean, come on now. Let's not stockpile. Let's not hoard. Let's just play it by ear. You know what I'm saying? This is play it by ear. But anyway, uh, we're going to go on and get into the store. I just wanted to just say hey to my family update. Uh, you on my situation with my health and hopefully you all are faring well with your health issues or whatnot or I don't know because you know the kids are out up here in Atlanta on, on, in just about every doggone county they got the kids out for two or three weeks trying to figure out this coronavirus thing and, and Lord knows they have been tapping some of uh, people that I know not at my job per se but other people's jobs where they're going home working from home telecommuting it's something. It's it's, it's kind of scary and, and, and then kind of like mm, refreshing that you get to be at home, you know, with your family and loved ones and don't have to worry about going out, being exposed to just going out in the hustle and bustle. But uh, and I don't know. In the comment section of some way back when, I don't know if it was my uh, PMP Patricia. Casey, were you looking for a job work or something in corresponding or writing for vlogs? Because um, I'm trying to think of this place. I used to write for a column list when I was doing soap operas. Uh, I don't know if it was called The Insider. But uh, put down in the comments, were you looking for work? And that's the type of work you wanted to do? Um, because I can uh, give you some links to go and you can write commentary on uh, different shows, uh, especially um, soap opera shows because um, that's the realm I was in when I first started my channel and, and I got a nice following from that but then I just got tired of it you know just got tired it wasn't my real spin and I didn't want to keep watching shows I kind of like to have a topic of discussion and then go from there so if that was you my pimp my PMP Carson uh PM Patricia Carson. I like Pimp. I like PMP Clark Kaysen. I like that job. But anyway, let me know. Get down in them comments and um I'll try to give you some links that I had when I was uh writing for one of them uh vlogging companies. <coughs> okay, but let's get right on into this Real Housewives of Atlanta saga. Uh, with Eva Marcel and Nene Vix putting her in the mix saying she's trying to use her to be a part of this program okay but it goes on to say why does Eva Marcel have a peach yet Marlo Hampton does not Eva has zero storyline and Lord can we just have a sidebar there yes we don't need Eva I don't need to see Eva on here unless she's going to give us a true storyline and I'm basically talking about not following her husband and his politician politician type aspirations no I don't want to hear about that damn sure don't want to hear about her kids bless them wish them well keep them off social media so we can know them when they get into their young adulthood you like well damn who they is who they doing all that good work out there and they be like oh that's good with you like, what okay good but you know what i'm saying let them be off social media unless they want to be but let them be of age to say meaning 18 or older that they want to be in this entertainment mix because it comes with a lot of tricks and it ain't all uh kosher or cool okay but anyway yeah uh, and i don't i'm tired of seeing eva have babies you know basically her storyline is get you know uh birthing and bringing another baby in this world no i need her to be in the drama i need some mix to be on her uh ticket okay i need her to be uh, showing out where we can actually go in on her or whatever she talking foul or doing foul things you know you don't want to mess up a pregnant woman you don't want to go to in on a pregnant woman because they're pregnant and they hormonal and you know you, they just all across the board and nowhere you know what i'm saying so we need evil to be free from pregnancy at least one season so she can give us more of her and less of her kids okay we can see her husband all day if she want to give him to us she want to put him in some uh 
sticks or whatnot. But let's just kids are off hand. You know, they they they're just off limits. We don't need to see them. We we don't. Okay, just let us hear about them, show us pictures or whatever. But we don't need to see you interacting with them. We need to see you in your business. We need to see you bumping and grind. We're not bumping and grinding, but grinding out there in the streets, making uh revenue avenues happen and this, that and the third. But if even gonna give us another storyline of being pregnant, I forget that. I can you can miss me on all of that. But anyway, going back, it says, uh, meanwhile, Marlo is bringing so much tea to the party. In essence, Eva seeing gives the Real Housewives of Atlanta viewers the perfect opportunity to get up for a snack or a bathroom break. I'm telling you, honey, when you see Eva, you yeah, okay, go on and use the bathroom, go on and pee. Hell, go on and take a bath, you know, if you're taking a bird bath or whatever. You got time, because the shit they showing with Eva, uh-uh, you ain't missing nothing, okay? Go on and fix you a snack or, or make your lunch for tomorrow or whatever, because well, Eva gives us napping but baby uh bringing in the world and all that kind of she's showing us she can eat like hell and not gain nothing okay she need to tell us about her metabolism and what she doing with that okay but anyway moving back on it says at the start of the current real housewives of Atlanta season Eva was hanging on to some vague beef with Nene Eva was so mysterious about her living situation last season and she was mad at Nene for wearing a microphone during a conversation my sidebar again okay did not anybody know or tell Eva that when you're on Real Housewives of Atlanta, you stay mic mic all day, mic all during your season of uh, expressing yourself on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Why did she think Nene was going to unmic? We're watching the show. We need all the drama we can get. Why would Nene come and converse with her and not be mic? Ooh, okay, somebody teach Eva the tricks and the trade and the rules and the regulations of being a housewife contendant. Or, con uh, what do you call it? Castmate. Alright, we're going back to the article. It says, Nene has done a lot of shady things on this show, but it really doesn't belong on the list. Try again, Eva. This is child's play in comparison to Nene's best work. Yes, Lord. Like how she called herself befriending you again, and y'all sitting there eating while the other women was hanging off a, uh, a building. You remember how y'all bonded back? Y'all played nice with each other, and uh, Nene, Nene stroked your ego, and now she's just tearing you up in her confessionals, saying you don't do nothing for the network. You should shouldn't come back because we don't need to see you have babies. Yes, Nene said that all about you. The shade is real, girl. But anyway, going back to the article, it says, Nene dished on Eva in a recent interview with The Breakfast Club. She was asked, what about Eva? What's your relationship with Eva? And Nene responded with a rhetorical question, what is my relationship with Eva? <laughs> Ooh, I want to know, too. I'm like, damn, Nene, you are so shady ass. You are shady as itch, girl. You are shady as itch. But I know you wanted everybody to be in your corner. You wanted somebody to film with so you can actually get paid. I understand. I know the game. But damn, you couldn't say this for the reunion girl and clock tea all day long on probably them three long ass drawn out episodes they're going to give us. And if they say four, I might have to fall to the floor because I'm like, uh uh. Uh, it'll be good. Half of them gonna be a snooze fest. Two of them gonna be on point, but probably the other two, if they give us four episodes, gonna be a snooze fest. If they give us three, probably one's gonna be good, and the other two are gonna be snooze fest. I'm just saying, just because of the history or watching the reunion show of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But Nene says she gonna come with it, y'all. She gonna cut them up, okay? She gonna slice and dice. She gonna give them what they came for. Yeah, that's what she said. Honey, she gonna cut them up on this reunion. She ain't saving nobody. Ain't nobody safe in her book. Okay, but she uh, befriended everybody just to get them back. <laughs> now she gonna go on hiatus and say, "I have no friends. The door is closed." I mean, girl, Nene. Stop it, okay? But anyway, going back to the article, it says Nene recall she came on the show saying she's known me for ten years. We've always been cool. She's always liked me, and I always liked her. My husband liked her. 
Okay, apparently the two of them weren't that cool. Nene remarked, and I feel like she kind of used me to get on the show because she was saying things that I didn't even think were accurate. But I was just going along with them because I knew she wanted to get on the show. Duh. What else did he even have going on? Of course, she was thirsting for a peach. Okay. Oh, child. Nene, Nene. And that's kind of somewhat maybe accurate because she did... After being on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, she got a little spill on the Ricky Smiley show. So, mm, okay, the avenues, the opportunities do open up when you're on such a big platform or celebrity gossip and trending news, okay? Oh, uh, yeah. But going back to the article, it says, Nene also addressed that scene with Eva from last season. She said, I have to wear a mic in a scene where she was talking. But she wasn't saying anything bad or negative or anything that couldn't have been shown. If she had, I would have said, shh, like Candy Burris. Okay? Told Cynthia Bailey, I'm wearing a mic. I would have told her that I'm wearing a mic. Of course. Nene was referring to Cynthia's infamous hot mic moment where she admitted to pretending she didn't know Kenya Moore would be at her event. Okay? Nene continued, I felt like Eva came back this season acting as if I had really done something to her. The person who put her in info out there was Marlo. She came back with more beef with me and I didn't do anything. I to this day haven't said anything about her until last week because she's been in her interview saying all these negative things about me so that's my beef with her oh nene what are you doing please don't give eva a storyline for next season we can't have her uh, we can't have her around again hanging onto a weak ass beef nene emphasized the person you really should be pissed with is marlo i love how nene is throwing her good friend under the bus Hashtag total nini move. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm loving it too, but I'm pretty sure Marlo is loving the extra press as well. She don't care who get her shine because when she do uh, be called to come out, she come out, she show up, and she show out. Okay? And Marlo fashion. All right. So Nene and Marlo, they have that little, I guess, banter where she tells, I'm going to blame this on you. You take up for it because you're a strong itch like that. I know you can get them. You can give them the girl. I'm just going to give it to you and let you handle it. And then they can talk about me saying, I threw you under the bus. Because Marlo don't care, honey. You can throw her under the bus, on top of the bus, in the bus. She going to shine regardless. And if she has to get Nene straight, like she did at that little thing where they call themselves getting a fight over nobody's telling Cynthia about who really was the snake gate and all that. And, and Kenya and Nene had got into it. And then Nene going to tell Marlo this was her room. She didn't uh, run her room correctly. And this and you started. Marlo had to shut all that shit down. Tell me, don't blame this shit on me. This ain't even about me. She shut Nene down. I was like, okay, Marlo, I see you, girl. I ride on your, I ride on your team, Marlo, girl. Shut Nene down. And Nene couldn't do nothing but like she was, uh, the, the, how they flashed her in that scene. It's like she had saw a ghost. Like, I know you ain't talking to me. But I better keep my mouth shut because you will get, you got my secret. You're not, yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I'm like, Nene could say nothing after that. When she thought, who are you talking to? I know you ain't talking to me. I ain't this shit that you got. I was like, go ahead, go on, show and prove, my little show and prove. But that's all I had, family. So now it's time we'll say you family on these two issues. The coronavirus that I slid in there. I wanted to make sure y'all were cool. Y'all weren't going out here acting like no fools out here. Running these streets. Buying up all this stuff. And then you ain't going to know what to do come two or three months later. Okay. Don't be spending your uh, house mortgage money. And, and your car note money. And any other money that was meant for some bills. But you trying to stock up like you in some kind of bunker. Finna go on the ground and... and you know, <laughs> be gone from the world as you know it for a couple of months. Uh uh uh, uh don't do that. Mm -mm, don't do that. Stay out, do you, 
and, 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 and just do you, have you been doing you thus far before this coronavirus came in? Live your life. Live it appropriately. And God going to take care of everything in due time. Okay? But that's all I have, fam. Y'all get out there and tell me what y'all thought about either the coronavirus or how people are acting around here, standing in these long lines, fighting out here over food or whatnot. Hey, you need to be at the uh, pharmacy place for the people that got, um, what do you call it? It, medical illnesses, you need to see how you can stockpile some antibiotics and, and some pain medicine and uh, if you're on some type of antidepressant, how, how am I going to deal with that if everything's shut down? We need those too, just like you need air to breathe and food to eat and water to drink. You still need to get medication, okay? You need to make sure all these things are on kill, not just trying to eat and drink. Okay, I know black folk, and I'm just saying it because I'm black, we like to eat and drink. I know we do, okay? <laughs> Mostly eat, though. But, you know, we got to think about our health too and the um, medications we take every day. Day. What are we gonna do about that? That damn Elijah tell you it don't he gonna miss one video before he get his little part in here. Elijah, Elijah, come here. Before I throw something at you, come here. Okay, don't be calling Peter on me, cause when I say throw something, I don't be trying to hit the baby, but I'll be trying to scare his ass. But anyway. That's all I got, fam. Y'all get in the comments. Tell me what y'all thought about two sep uh, subject matter topics we talked about. Y'all be well. And I will see y'all next video. Thank you. See you later. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe, share, and like the videos. All right? Thank you. And bring more people over to the family affair. Because it's not just me. It's you, too. It's you, too. Talk to you soon.